Okay. Hello, welcome. I'm Jenny Drenovich. I will be the chair for this session. This is the single cell uh, track for talks. We only have three. We had one cancellation. Um, my script so for people online, please put your questions in the chat. I think we have a, uh, another moderator somewhere who will collect those for me and then we will do about 10 minutes for each talk and then we will have all questions at the end. Okay, so first step would be um, Avi Shivastava close enough, uh, who's a postdoctoral fellow at the New York Genome Center, and he will be talking about characterizing cellular heterogeneity in chromatin state with, okay, how do you say your package? Uh, You'll do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Come up. You have to use the microphone. Okay. And how do you move forward with this? I yes. guess, yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here, and thanks, Jenny, for the introduction. Uh, uh, my name is Avi Srivastava. Uh, I'm a postdoc in Rahul Satija's lab at New York Genome Center. And today I'm going to talk about this very exciting technology, uh, to put it out, like it's Single Cell Cut and Tag Pro, uh, and, uh, and leverage that new technology, single cell technology, to design a computational model to understand the functional role of DNA element, uh, and the tool's name is Single Cell Chrome HMM. So, if, if I talk about my research uh, interest over the years is to understand the cause and the consequences of cellular heterogeneity. Uh, and over the years, I've developed a multiple tool for single cell RNA-seq analysis. Uh, you might be familiar with Salman, Callisto, Surat, and all those tools. And, uh, and then single cell ATAC-seq, there was Signac and a couple of other tools which I, I've contributed to. But these all these methods uh, are or is very small piece of a very complex biological puzzle, right? And uh, the field is actively moving towards profiling newer cellular modalities, uh, specifically under to understand the functional role of uh, uh, non-coding uh, DNA elements in at, at single cell resolution, uh, we have to do at much finer grain uh, single cell technologies. Uh, but before moving into uh, understanding this, uh, the current technology which we developed, uh, let's look at some of the limitations of the uh, currently available technologies. And going all the way, way back to ChIP-seq, uh, where we can profile histone modification profile. Uh, but the problem with this was it, it cannot be scaled with thousands of single cells, right? And then relatively recently, uh, single cell atac came along uh, where, where we can profile uh, open chromatin region at single cell resolution. But the problem with this measurement is uh, it, you're looking basically at the binarized profile. With each DNA element, they can be open or they can be closed, right? But actual biology is really complex, much more complex, I would say, than just looking at the binarized open or closed chromatin regions. For example, if they are poised regions or active regions, you cannot really differentiate by looking only the open chromatin profiles. You need much more information. And one of the information to really uh, look into those are looking at the histone modification profile. And relatively recently, single cell cut and tag uh, came along where we, it, it's, a, it's a way to stain uh, the cells with TN5 transposase with protein A fusion. And you bind the, and the antibodies get bind to specific regions of interest based on whatever the staining antibody was used. And that way you can profile specific histone modification at single cell resolution, which is very important to study the cellular heterogeneity. Now, the problem with single cell cut and tag is the data is sparse. And not only that the data is sparse, but also to understand the functional role is the combination of histone marks, which defines the role of a DNA element. And still, uh, there is no technology where you can profile multiple histone modification within a single cell. So if the slide is already outdated because this New York Genome Center is actually a powerhouse of uh, developing new technologies. We can measure a couple of histone modification, but we, we have to go even further than that, that. And right now, we cannot. Uh, but the basic idea is you need multiple histone modification for each and every cell. Uh, and that's what, what, that is what, what is one of the limitations of single cell cut and tie. So to improve on that, uh, we developed this newer, uh, I would say like an extension of single cell cut and tag, which we're calling single cell cut and tag pro. And the pro part is coming from the protein where you can measure protein and the histone modification within one cell. So there's no uh, integration. There's no interpolation. You are actually measuring the both cell surface protein and the histone modification within one cell. And the idea is relatively simple. You stain the cells with the protein of interest, and then you histone modification protein of interest. And again, cell with, uh, stain the cells with the cell surface protein, and then you run 10x, 8x protocol on them to generate the data set. 
so uh, we, using this technology, we profile like four histone modification mark, where a couple of them were uh, activation mark, there's repressive mark, K27 trimethylation, and K9 trimethylation, which are marking the repressive regions of the genome. Uh, so one question that really comes to mind, like why did we went through this all effort of profiling protein in the same experiment altogether, right? So the, I was talking earlier about the problems with the single cell cutentic data set, which was the sparsity. And one of the way to, you know, work around this problem of sparsity is pseudo bulking group of cells, right? To pseudo bulk a group of cells, you need to figure out what are the groups of cells which are relatively similar. And RNA-seq is relatively, uh, it has been shown multiple times that you can figure out the KNN graphs and everything to figure out what are the group of cells which are similar. But here, the real problem is, let's see if I can point out. Okay, yeah. So the problem is if you just do unsupervised clustering of the cut and tag data set, no protein at all, right? The resolution, uh, like it, it is separating B cells, myeloid cells, and lymphoid cells, but the resolution which is needed to really go into, let's say, naive cells, memory cells, and uh, regulatory cells is, is not really there. So that's why prote protein information is really useful. You have specific antibodies which can differentiate these finer cell type annotations, and since they have, we have profiled uh, the histone modification and the cell surface protein together, you can use this information to subgroup these uh, cut and tag data set into, into different groups. So on the extreme right, that's what I'm trying to show. It's, it's like a hybrid uh, supervised uh, PCA uh, used uh, UMAP embeddings where histone modification data is plotted, but the, the nearest neighbor graph was created using the protein information. So using the protein information, we can separate out finer grain cell type annotation, right? So this solved one of the problem with single cell cut on top, at least approach towards solving one of the problem, right? But there's another problem where we cannot profile multiple histone modification altogether. We need multiple histone modification profile to learn the, you know, chromatin dynamics across, across the cell lineages. So to solve that, we design another computational tool, which we're calling single cell chrome HMM. Uh, and the basic idea is to start with integration using the protein information as the central modality. So the, one of the very good thing about the protein information is it's very statistically robust, not like single cell RNA-seq, they do no dropout or any kind of effect, right? It's robust in defining cell type annotation. Through site seq we have shown multiple times that it, it really helps to profile protein. Since the data is robust, we can use this and across all the histone modification, we have uh, protein information as well, right? So we use protein across multiple experiment as a central anchor and then try to integrate all the data into one framework, right? That's what I'm trying to show you on the right, that uh, there are like eight site seq, uh, which is combination of protein and RNA seq, histone modification, and then ASAP seq, which is a combination of ATAC seq with protein. So there's a whole new, whole suite of technologies which you can integrate into one consistent framework. And the idea is like if all the cells into are grouped into one consistent cell, uh, one consistent framework, excuse me. Uh, you can annotate cell type annotation to each of them uh, in, in a consistent way. And that's that's really the beauty of this whole data comes in. So here you're looking at CD8 loci, right? And here like nine cellular modalities, each with six or seven cellular cell type annotation with them, right? ATAC seq uh, showing coverage, uh, higher coverage in the CD8 loci, specifically for the CD8 T cells. Uh, activation markers are showing enrichment. But at the same time, all the repressive marks are active, enriched, sorry, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the cell types except CD8 T cells. Uh, along with that, you have RNA-seq, which was showing high enrichment in CD8 T cells, uh, along with protein, uh, specifically CD8 protein, which is also. So you have like eight or 10 modalities all integrated into the same framework, and it enables you through these uh, exciting technologies like Site-seq, ASAP-seq, and Single Cell Cut and Tag Pro. So, uh, the, uh, as you can imagine, the infrastructure which you need to handle this kind of data set is going to be even more complicated, like how you integrate, how do you perform C, like uh, uh, low dimensional embedding. So it's, it's a work in progress, but the whole, this is like proof of concept idea that you can uh, you visualize everything into one and then maybe use it downstream to understand the functional role of DNA elements. So once you figure out uh, integrated, uh, once we integrated everything into one cell or uh, group of cells, what a general way to understand the functional role of DNA elements is through Chrome HMM. Uh, it's a tool which uses the bomb welch algorithm. It's an HMM, multivariate HMM model, uh, and assign like uh, 
assign each 200 base pair region of the genome if it's activation it is oh sorry it is a promoter if it's an enhancer if it's a repressed region and the idea is uh, shown on the left like specifically here like k4 dimethylation and trimethylation is higher so it's kind of representative of promoter region so that's why i'm denoting it with a green color which these two states are marked as a promoter the three and four state marks as an enhancer similarly nine and ten are marking as a repressive and lastly as a heterochromatin region but how do you visualize them uh, bulk uh, using bulk chrome hmm since we we cannot really work with the single cell data set the idea is to perform pseudo bulk analysis on the b cells like all the b cells grouped into one uh, one profile and that's what i'm trying to show at the bottom like each 200 base pair region of the pax5 loci uh, where uh, the transcription start site uh, is showing some K4 dye and trimethylation pattern, which is marking of promoter region. As we go inside the gene body, it's K4 monomethylation, which is marking enhancer region. Similarly, K27 trimethylation is marking that the all other cell types is this region is repressed, right? Uh, it's reflected like the combination of histone modification mark. It's shown as a green, and as we go into gene body, it's getting bluer and bluer, which is marking the state as an enhancer, right? But the problem still is like we are not going at single cell resolution. This is again pseudo bulk. We are talking about B cells as a whole, CD8 TS, T cells as a whole, right? So that's why single cell chrome HMM, it's kind of extends the previously uh, published method of chrome HMM, which basically use the model learned on the pseudo bulk profile and apply at single cell level. And again, if you, if you have to visualize all this complicated data set, for example, each 200 base pair region of the genome for 20,000 cell for 12 state, it's it's really not really doable in in in, in the current format, right? So the, there's a workaround which we figured out was basically uh, visualize each 200 base pair region uh, independently, right? Here uh, I'm showing the pseudo bulk profile in the bottom, but we can look at the specific uh, yellow region and look at what uh, for each cell what are the what are the uh, repressive state probabilities and what are the promoter state probability. For example, this region is transcript start site. It is showing higher promoter posterior probability and is showing repressive posterior probability across all all other cell types. So uh, I, I really encourage you to check out a paper. Or check out a paper. We can do a lot more things uh, with this uh, posterior probabilities, but I have to summarize summarize it for now uh, for the sake of time. Uh, we developed a new technology which is called single cell cut and tag pro, and then uh, this a new computational framework which is called single cell chrome HMM, where you can look all these uh, all this uh, we're calling this funnily <laughs> mega omic profile uh, uh, to really uh, look into this mega omic profile in the combination of histone modification marks. With this, I'd like to acknowledge all my lab and our funding resources, and probably I'm open to question after everybody else is uh, finished with their talk. Thank you.